Hey guys, Matt Kentucky Range Time, back with another episode of our Ballistic Gel Block Test Series. And today we're going to be focusing on a 240 grain cast lead uh, semi wad cutter bullet. Now this is something I picked up at a, at a local shop here in town a while back and uh, got a pretty good price on them. And uh, so this is a traditional bullet ran in a lot of 44 Special, 44 mag, lever actions and pistols, uh, a lot of the Super Red Ox and the Vic Arrows and, and uh, some of the older style 44 mag uh, revolvers. But uh, we're gonna be running it through a, a 20 inch lever action rifle, nine and a half inch Super Red Hawk, a four inch Taurus Tracker and a two and three quarter inch Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum today. And uh, so let's turn around and take a look at the loading and then we'll get on out to the range and see how this thing does. All right, so here's a look at the loading. Uh, we've got Winchester large pistol slash large pistol Magnum primers. And again, this is in my, my relabeled packaging uh, just, to, just to complete the visual here. Uh, the box of uh, 240 grain cast uh, uh, semi wad cutter bullets. It says TC, but they're actually semi wad cutters. And something a little bit different this time. Uh, Hodgson Universal Powder. So, uh, you know. Don't see a lot of universal powder being used these days, so just wanted to mix it up a little bit with this lead bullet. And here is a good look at the loading on this. Uh, so this bullet does have the uh, the lube groove in it, and it does have a wax uh, wax uh, lubricant uh, applied to it. And uh, all right, let's get to the range and see how these things do. All right, guys, continuing our 44 mag gel block test series, and next up is the uh, 240 grain cast lead uh, semi wad cutter bullet. And I did start this uh, test previously with 32 inches gel block, but I was splattering the plates at 32 inches. So uh, I'm back now. I've got all my catch blocks are all shot up and everything. And we're just going to throw this down through uh, 64 inches of gel block and see where this thing actually stops if we can get a catch. So here we go. velocity of 1396.4 and let's go see if we can keep this thing in 64 inches of gel block and see where it stops. All right guys here we are at 64 inches of gel block and we do have a smack on the backstop plate here so this bullet has come down 64 inches of gel and actually smack the plate and then bounce back in about a half inch. So, all right, let's see what the uh, nine and a half inch Super Red Hawk can do with this. All right, guys, 240 grain cast lead semi wad cutter out of the Ruger Super Red Hawk. We did not get a velocity. Let's we'll see if we manage to catch. <coughs> okay, we did get a catch that time. Let's go one more for the velocity into the backstop. Velocity of 1269.9. All right, let's go look at that catch. All right, guys, so wound tracks are coming through here and there's nothing real special about these wound tracks. It's just, uh, it's just a small permanent wound cavity and straight line penetration. And again, we are all the way down here to the end and again, with the nine and a half inch barrel, we got 64 inches of penetration. Uh, this rigger bullet is laying right in here, right beside the rifle bullet. So 64 inches plus penetration out of both of these. All right, next up is the uh, Taurus Tracker, the M44 model, four inch barrel. Velocity 
of 1110.3. Let's go see if we got the catch. Alright guys, uh, we didn't make it to the stop plate this time, but we did make it a pretty astounding 42 inches. See it sitting in there. Uh, looks like we probably actually went out to about 43 before the jail sucked it back down an inch. So uh, we'll call that one 43 inches and let's go try out this uh, two and three quarter inch combat magnum. All right, guys, next up is the two and three quarter inch uh, Smith & Wesson uh, combat magnum, 44 combat magnum. And uh, this is going to be the round that most of our hikers and our, our hunters are going to be interested in because this is a typical barrel length choice for a backup gun for people who elk hunt, who hike, uh, especially in the Northwest and up in Canada where uh, brown and grizzly bears are concerned. And this is the hard cast load that a lot of these guys uh, uh, run for that, either 240 grain or even heavier bullets. So seeing what kind of penetration we get out of this one is gonna be very interesting to a whole bunch of you guys. So let's get this done. get a velocity. Let's go see if we got the catch. All right, guys, two and three quarter inch uh, Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum. And believe it or not, we are all the way down here at 60 and three quarter inches of penetration. And uh, this, is, uh, this is just amazing. Um, I've got one more of these left. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and fire it just to uh, see if we can confirm this. All right, guys. So uh, I fired one of these off camera and got the velocity 1043. But after seeing that we had almost 62 inches of penetration, I want to take this last uh, of these uh, semi wad cutters and I want to do a, a, a second shot with the Smith and Wesson Combat Magnum. So once again, no velocity. Let's go check out this catch again. All right, guys, this is the reshoot with the two and three quarter inch Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum. This is our entry. And you can see this moon channel is very clean and tight down through here. And this round actually stops at 40 inches of penetration. Uh, finally settled down here around 39 and three quarters, but it looks like it was out to 40 inches before the gel box sucked it back. So uh, that's a little bit different than the, uh, the 60 inches of penetration we got with this first shot. So I'm thinking maybe this one hit uh, an existing wound track somewhere down through here and uh, might actually lent a little bit of extra velocity to it. So, all right, guys. So here's a look at our results on this. The, uh, these two rounds were from the first, uh, first test start that I suspended because I didn't have enough gel block up. And then we got the 20 inch, the uh, nine and a half Super Red Hawk, uh, the four inch Taurus and the two and three quarter combat Magnum. And there's an unfired bullet. Uh, these two went through 48 inches of gel block and impacted the steel plate. And this one just all but disintegrated. Uh, I actually think this one was from the Super Red Hawk and this one was from the uh, from the rifle again. And uh, so I, I stopped that test and come back a little bit later and uh, added another gel block to, uh, to that to make a, a full 64 inches of gel block. <clears throat> so this test here uh, was done through 40 I'm sorry, through 64 inches of gel block. And uh, you can see the rifle came down and impacted the uh, steel plate. So that was 64 plus inches of penetration. Same thing with the uh, Super Red Hawk. And then the four inch actually went 42 inches. And uh, the two and three quarter inch combat magnum, we actually got 
two different shots I took with this one. Uh, one went 60 inches, which seemed a little extreme. And uh, I did reshoot on it and got 40 inches with the second shot, which was more uh, in line with what I was seeing from the four inch uh, Taurus tracker. Uh, I'm guessing that maybe I hit a, uh, uh, a perfect hit in a second, in a, an existing wound channel through that block. And, and it actually decreased the resistance on that. Uh, these things can go through the gel block really close to prior wound channels and doesn't affect a whole lot uh, because the gel still expands and it's still cutting through uh, new, new gel. But if it does hit a, an existing wound track and it completely lines back up, then it does decrease the resistance on these. And I think that's what would happen here. All right, so 240 grain cast lead semi-wad cutter bullet. And I'll say this, the, the velocities on this were comparable to the 300 grain XTP bullet. But what you've got to remember, this being a cast lead bullet with no gas check, no high tech coating, no polymer coating, nothing on the backside of this bullet except bare lead, uh, you can't push these too fast or you'll end up melting that lead and leading up your barrel uh, really bad. And that, that turns into a whole nother set of problems that, that you really don't want to deal with. So it's better to, to keep these down from a, a moderate to a mild load and, and just let them do their thing. But what we saw was we didn't have any expansion except for the two that hit the plates. You now there's still plates at the back. But we didn't have any, other than that, we didn't have any expansion at all on this. This uh, semi-wad cutting bullet has just enough of a taper to it that it cut through the block. Uh, not enough frontal area to, uh, to cause this thing to deform up like we saw in some other lead bullets in previous testing. So, um, you know, just a really good deep penetrating bullet. Um, we, we went through 64 inches of gel block with the 20 inch rifle and uh, the nine and a half inch Super Red Hawk. Uh, we got 42 inches of penetration with the four inch barrel Taurus and 40 inches of penetration with the uh, two and three quarter inch barrel Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum. So even down with that two and three quarter inch barrel, we still got really good uh, penetration out of this. Now, so our temporary wound cavity is what you would expect out of a bullet that gets no expansion. I mean, it, it, it blew open a little bit from the hydrostatic effect of this displacing the, the gel. Uh, permanent wound cavity was just very small, uh, basically a, a 0 0.43, 0 0.44 diameter hole going through. It's just whatever the bullet actually caught as it went through for the permanent wound cavity. Uh, but if you're if you're trying, if you're using this for defense, for backwoods defense against bear uh, or similar predator, uh, you want the deep penetration. I mean, you need to get in deep to get to the vital organs to be able to to take a shot that, that will penetrate bone or that will uh, get deep enough to catch a vital organ and, and bring us bring whatever it is to a stop. So uh, this does have a, a purpose. Uh, so you just got to apply it in, in, the right, uh, in the right environment. So, all right, guys, questions and comments, let's hear those. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, feel free to share these videos. There's a little button down below that says share. If you uh, click that, you can copy and paste the link or you can share it directly to one of your other social media sites. And, uh, you know, sharing this actually brings uh, more viewers and more subscribers my way. And, and that helps out with, uh, with paying the bills and keeping the lights on. So, all right, guys, Matt, Kentucky Range Time. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.